Now I suspect that most of the questions you have about owning an electric car relate to charging. Actually, I know that because that's what you have been asking us about on our socials. And the business of charging isn't as complicated as it seems. Yes, there is a little bit of new terminology, perhaps a bit of a new skill set to learn, but honestly, it can be as easy as plugging in your phone to charge every night. So let's start with the basics. Now, in simple terms, electric cars can be charged at two different speeds, slow and rapid. If you have a charging point at home or even just a three pin plug socket, then you can slow charge your car. And if you do this overnight, of course, you can take advantage of cheaper electricity rates and wake up to a fully charged car the next morning. What a way to start your day, right? Now, a car like this Vauxhall Corsa E will take around seven and a half hours to charge if you have a home charger unit. Now, obviously home charging is really simple and cheap, but what if you need to recharge mid journey? That's when you're gonna to need to use a public rapid charger. And these do actually come in all shapes and sizes, but the good thing is they pretty much all do the same thing. They put a lot of electricity into your battery in a short space of time. Finding a charger is simple. There are loads of smartphone apps that not only show where charging points are, but they also show you if someone is actually using it. We would recommend using ZapMap, PlugShare and WhatsApp as great places to start. Or of course, you can use your car's navigation to help find them too. A lot of rapid chargers have an output of 50 kilowatts, which is seven times more than you get from your home charger. The latest generation of rapid chargers can charge up to 350 kilowatts, which is 50 times faster than your manager at home. Now the Vauxhall Corsa E has a maximum charging speed of 100 kilowatts. So at a rapid charger, it will take about 30 minutes to go from 15 to 80% charged. Although rapid chargers come in all shapes and sizes, they all work in the same way. You plug in, choose to pay by contactless or through an app, and that is basically it. When you want to stop, you either end the session on the charger or by tapping your contactless card on the pad. See, told you it was easy. And you don't even have to stay with the car while it's charging. So go get a coffee, get on with your life admin, or maybe do some shopping. But I know you still have questions, so let's look at those. This is an easy one. In a car like this Vauxhall Mocha E, the cable you will get with the car here is six meters. That's actually longer than the car itself, so it means you'll be able to stretch to a charge point, even if it is at the opposite end of the parking space. If you're using a public rapid charger, like the ones you'll find at motorway service stations, the cable is actually built into the charger, so you'll need to remember where your socket is on your own car and park it close so you're not having to stretch the cable too far. On this Vauxhall Corsa E, the flap is at the back, so you'd reverse in to make it nice and easy. Okay, this is the big one that everyone does worry about, fair enough. But first of all, you're soon gonna get used to charging and how the car works, where you plug in, so you will soon learn to stop worrying. However, if something goes wrong, Maybe you make a miscalculation or take a wrong turn and you run out. So what happens in that instance? Well, exactly the same thing as if you were in a petrol or a diesel car and you ran out of fuel, you will just come to a slow stop. Although an electric car will give you plenty of warning that it's getting low on juice and will actually even suggest nearby charging points to help you out, it will also give you a few hundred meters of emergency power to make sure you can pull over to a safe place then you're just going to have to call a breakdown service and wait for help, just as you would in any other car which runs out of fuel. They will then come and either top you up using a generator charger or tow you to a charge point. Now, this is quite an interesting one because the battery charge will actually reduce over time, but not by a significant amount. Unless you do something silly like leave the car switched on. But who would do such a thing like that? 
Anyway, the reason is that the battery needs to look after itself. So in really hot or really cold weather like this, it will circulate some liquid around to keep it at a nice temperature. And actually what it does is it ensures that it's at its most efficient for when you return. The car might also use some of the main power pack's energy to top up the smaller battery, which runs features like the connectivity and security systems too. But you wouldn't expect this to knock more than a few miles off your range over a couple of weeks. Yes. Now, this is genuinely a question that we get asked a lot, but just think about it. A car that you couldn't charge in the rain in Great Britain. Now, that's not going to be a huge amount of use, is it? The car and the charger both have gadgets inside which talk to each other. They run checks to make sure everything is safe and won't let the power flow until they're happy that no one is going to get a shock. You'll be able to hear the clicks, see the lights flashing, as it runs the checks when you plug in. Now this is something that you do not have to worry about because as soon as you plug the charger into your car and start charging, it will lock into place. The same is true usually in most public charging points because it's only you with the key that can unlock it. And that's it, just like that, you are charged up, ready to go, and you won't ever need to set foot in a petrol station again. Unless, of course, you want to buy chocolate or Krispy Kreme donuts. <laughs> <laughs>